Hey, welcome back to Her Restored Spirit Podcast. My name is Tammy and I'm your host and well, I've talked about how I, um, I've had a little bit of downtime lately. I've had a little bit of time to reflect and one of the things that I really noticed about myself is I was getting started to get more anxious about things. I was seen as an Enneagram one. I was starting to nitpick and not just others, like myself, all the things that I did, focus on things I didn't do, the things I didn't do well. Um, I was trying to force things that ordinarily didn't need to be forced. I was trying, even my quiet times and things, like I felt they were rushed and they were uninspired. So it caused me to take a moment and to look at what was going on. And I thought that I would share my insights with you. I thought that I would um, see if anybody else has this um, go on sometimes. And because it's, we get so focused on what's in front of us. We get so focused on life and moving and just time is like, the summer is almost all the way over. And I'm like, what just happened? How did that happen? How did it happen that summer is almost over? Where did it go? Um, Who stole it? Because now we're looking at middle of July. My kids start school in like less than three weeks. How is that possible? And I've also realized that some of the things that I really know that slows things down, I haven't been doing. So as I've been slowing down and, and taking a moment to really ask myself, why am I feeling anxious? Why am I feeling overwhelmed? Why am I feeling stress? Why am I nitpicking everything to death? And it's annoying me. Someone's at my door. And so the, the dog is barking. Hold on. Let me let the dog out. Gotta love when someone knocks on the door and drops something and running and it's not even for you. So all that, and to know that it's not even for, for me, it's for my neighbors. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. Let me gather my thoughts for a moment. It is, we're talking about when time speeds up, how can we slow it down? And I realized that I was not actually paying attention to the blessings and to things that I was grateful for. I could list it out. I could write it down, but I did not internalize any of that. So even with the kids, I was, instead of focusing on the things that were going right, I was looking in any gram one fashion at all the things we were missing the mark on all the things that we have coming up that are going to make stressful for all of us. And instead of really just taking a moment to give them a hug and say, you know what, I'm proud of you. And Hey, how do we want to finish this summer? I would say, get your room clean, get your books read, finish your math things like that, that it was, it was causing me. And then as much as I would tell them that I was like, get the emails written, get your podcast recorded. Why haven't you done this? Why you have no sales page. You have done this. Blah, 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 blah. You haven't gone live. You haven't done all these things that you have to do. You haven't organized your office. You haven't cleaned your kitchen. You haven't well, cleaned my kitchen. Just haven't organized. Like I, all these things that don't really matter overshadow the things that did all the things that didn't that really don't matter overshadowed the things that did and it hit me that I was allowing it to so I started looking at what I was grateful for and not just writing it down and saying oh I'm grateful for being having clients who I adore working with I'm grateful for two kids who are amazing. No, why are they amazing? Why do I adore working with my clients? What, you know, where is my calling aligning with my actions? Where do I see God work? Because there's a lot of things that until you start looking back, you don't see how he was there the whole time. And that's what I was missing. And that is what I don't want you to miss. So what can you do to slow time down for a moment? Take 20 minutes today and just ask yourself, 
what blessings do I see? And sometimes, sometimes they are actually things that you were frustrated with that you didn't realize how things were being orchestrated. That there's something to that. There's something to when you look back and you're like, oh, I see what you did there, God. High five. Well done. I apologize for being uh, annoying and telling you I didn't, you know, I want to go a different way. We get out of habit. We we will do things in for a habit, like writing down our three wins, writing down our gratitude, praying, all these things. But are you intentionally doing that? Have you sat down and asked yourself, okay, why is this important to mention? It makes a difference. It really does. And it's a different way of seeing the world. When we start acting intentionally, when we are really focused on what we want, where we need to be obedient, what we're, what aligns with how God created us, time slows down. We can embrace every moment. We can enjoy the moment we're in instead of focusing on all the things we need to do in the future. I am more of a, a, I see things coming in the future. I am more of a, let's get this stuff done now. Well, I am actually like a, let's procrastinate, let's procrastinate it now and then we'll do it later. But the more I, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm, re, I'm rewiring that. I am changing that because I, I used to tell myself, well, future Tammy can take care of that. Now I realize how darn busy future Tammy is and how much responsibility she has and how someone needs to look out for future Tammy. And, oh, wait, that's my job to stay present with God now. And then he will take care of future Tammy later, but I can intentionally do things to help future Tammy out. You can do things to help your future or future self out instead of saying, oh, future so-and-so can do this. Be like, how, what's one thing I could do right now that will help future Tammy be happier, have an easier time, know what her next steps are. Doing things intentionally, choosing to be in the moment and count your blessings with detail. Look at what you're grateful for and why, because that's also the reason why you're going to even get to whatever's coming in the future. You need that now. You need your why in order to be successful in the future, because if you don't have something to work for, if you don't have a deeper meaning of why you want to do something, it's just going to become another thing on your to-do list. So take time, take 20 minutes today, take your gratitude list and go one deeper. Ask yourself, what can I do or no? Why do I do this? What am I grateful for? How is it impacting my life? Realizing that how much I love my kids and realizing that I have been taking them for granted a little bit. I have been, I appreciate them. I say thank you to them. Although I've been pushing forward on projects and things that overshadowed really what was important. And it's like, oh, this is, this is my son's between ninth and 10th grade summer. I only have two summers left with him. And every day, it's, he's stepping more and more into the, that launching mechanism, that launch pad of, you know, soon next summer, he's going to be driving. He's going to be driving and, you know, in seven months, he's going to be driving. And at that point, there's a wedge, you know, there's space. So instead of just wishing that away, recognizing today, what are his strengths? Have I told him that lately? Because when I tell him, I'm also telling myself. So all the struggle with him, and he's an Enneagram 8, he's a, a challenger. We butt heads a lot, but he's also helped me grow. And I love him with all my heart. And I want him to succeed. And I've realized that he actually, whereas I want him to succeed, 
his focus is trying not to fail. And I'm like, why is that even possible? How, how is that even possible? And so recognizing that if I did not stop to look at things and analyze and really ask God, like, show me what I'm missing, I would have missed that fact. And then we would have just stepped butting heads instead of me being able to partner with him and see me like, buddy, these are the reasons why you can't fail. And if you do fall, this is why you're not going to fail. Falling is not, I mean, some, not something that we need to be afraid of, especially now when I'm here to help you, you want to fall. You want to make mistakes and try different things because at this point in time, the risk is so low that you can bounce back from it. When I recognize that he was so afraid of failing instead of succeeding, I'm able to walk with him. I wouldn't change that for anything. And I would not have noticed that if I did not take time to look at what I was grateful for and ask God to show me the things I was missing. What have you not asked God to show you? The things that you are counting as blessings, the things that you um, are grateful for. There's, I guarantee there's other aspects there that you haven't thought of that going deeper with it would give it some more clarity and insight and also remind you of your why. We have to remind ourselves of our why constantly because there are so many things fighting against our success. There's so many things fighting, including our own willpower. Our own brains want us to just to stay, stay in a relaxed state and not achieve anything, but that's not good enough for us. We know that God's called us to more. More doesn't mean bigger. Doesn't mean that you have to do these grand things, but more means more impact that he, he wants us to continue to, to take steps in obedience. So taking a moment to look back and seeing where the blessings, where he showed up and write it down is going to help you. With that, I'm going to close now, but before I do, um, yeah, my son is at the door asking for help and this is a new thing. So I'm gonna go and help him, but contact me, get on a call and let's talk about what your personalized next step is. Let's talk about where the unimportant is, is overshadowing what really matters. easy call. I promise you, but it will change how you see things. It will help you get some clarity and find the very next thing that you need to do. With that, friend, choose joy until joy chooses you. Bye for now.